Hi, it's Candy. Welcome to The Art of Planning. We're going to do a sit-down video today, and this is actually going to be the first of a series that's called Planner Know-How. So I have my notes, I have a couple of planners that we'll refer to, and we're going to get started. My notes are important because this is going to be a series, and I do want to be sure and cover some things in a timely manner, so I think they will be helpful to you. So I have a clock here. I'm going to start it because I know how long my battery will last, and I don't want to go over that time. So the art of planning. That's the name of our channel and everything I do in the planner world, and you know, I thought we kind of stumbled upon that just because we stumbled upon it, but I'm kind of thinking maybe we didn't just stumble upon that. I'm a big believer in divine intervention, and as we get further, as I get further and further into the planning, which I dearly love now, and I'm so happy to have found it, I kind of think maybe more that we stumbled upon that name by divine intervention because it's coming together more and more about planning, how it plays a lot in what I do, how how I can share it with others. And I, I don't know if you guys know this or not. It depends on who's watching. I'm still very, very much a newbie in this little planning world. I've only been here, what, six or eight months now, um, so I'm still a baby in the planner world. So, does that scare you that I'm doing a video to tell you about some things whenever I'm that new in the planner world? Well, I may be new in the planner world, but I'm certainly not new to planning. I've been planning for probably a good strong 15 years, so I've developed the way that I plan strategically and that I plan in business. I'm I'm very new to the pretty planning world, and you know what? I can only see planning getting stronger and stronger and stronger in the marketplace, I started to say, but also in people's lives. So if we're going to plan, we need to know how to do it so that it's a positive to us, right? I mean, if we, wanted, if we really want it to work. So let's go back to the art of planning. Our kind of catchphrase is pretty on purpose and powerful. So I got to thinking within the past few days when we do it in a pretty way and it serves us well, that's powerful. When we do it in an on purpose way and it serves us well, that's powerful. And when, when we're planning and we do it pretty and on purpose, that's powerful. Anything we do that helps us meet what we want to meet is powerful. So, don't you think we need to know how to do it in the best way possible so that it's even more powerful? So, now if you're just out there, and I don't want that to sound, I don't want that to sound trivial at all. If you're, if you are playing with it and that's all you want to do is, now see that sounded bad. If you're playing with it, having fun, and just want to play with it and have fun, that's wonderful. If you want to do it to help you strategically achieve something, then it helps to know how to do it better, stronger, more efficiently, um, in, in just a stronger way. So that's what we're going to delve into. If you're having fun doing it exactly how you want to do it, then I say, Wonderful, yay, that is great, okay? So, if you want to do it in a strategic way to help you achieve more, get stronger, have more time, know how to balance your time better, then you want to know a little bit more about how to do it. So, I will try to remember, I'll try to remember to post a link back here because I've done a video in all the videos I've done on paralyzed planning. And, and that had some really good information in it. I'll try to remember to post a link. If not, go back on my channel and look for one that says Paralyzed Planning because that was pretty good. Okay, so we're going to do Planner 101. So, here's the most important thing. So, if you take notes, take notes. The first thing, the hardest thing to do sometimes, is to start 
I know that sounds real elementary, but it's not. You got to get started. You can research, you can look, you can watch videos all day long, but you got to get started. Find, find a system, find a planner, or pull out your planner if you've got one buried someplace, but get started, okay? Get started, okay? If you don't have a system, get one. Just find one that will work. My, my foundational system is Franklin Covey. Now, this is the one I do my very most work out of. Like this, if I could only have one system, it would be the Franklin Covey system. I've had it and worked out of it for probably 15 years. I've had the same system. I use the Day on Two Pages system. If I could only have one system, this is exactly what it would be, okay? Now, I also do some pretty planning, and it, it has played a very important part in the last few months of my life, and I do that out of an Erin Condren. I was going to show you the cover. Everybody has different covers. So, Life Planner from Erin Condren. It's wonderful. A lot of people use it, so you can get a lot of guidance um, out of listening to YouTube's people showing you how they plan. Most everybody does a plan of the week, a plan with me, that kind of thing. So you'll have a lot of guidance and help in that one, if that's what you want to do. Find a planner and get started, okay? Now, I want to interject here. Whenever I started looking a few, several months ago, probably last May or June, something like that, um, I got real confused when I was researching planners because people would often refer to the name of their binder as their system. I need to backtrack on that. That's what I heard. Now, I, I could have very well misunderstood because I was hearing binder name and system synonymously, and they are absolutely not one and the same thing in everyone's verbiage. So somebody could be saying Kinsey, I use the Franklin Kinsey, and inside what they actually plan with are not Franklin Covey pages at all. So a lot of people do that, absolutely fine, but that might be something that as you listen, you listen for and you watch for. A lot of people use one binder and they use different insides. A lot of people um, sell planning pages on their websites on Etsy, on their Etsy sites. So you want to be really careful that you are understanding what people are saying, what they're referring to, and what they are using before you hop on board and order something. I would probably recommend if this is your first time planning that you get the binder and the system together. That way you know everything works together, it comes as it's meant to, to be, and you have a plan and you know what you're doing, okay? So that's whatever that's what I would recommend. Just because it will be easier for you, actually. So, you know, I I probably was hearing that all wrong, but I got real confused there. Okay, those your system is what you're going to be working with internally, and your binder is the outside of your system. Okay, now, I want to show you this. This is something else. As you're getting started, um, picking it up and getting started is the hardest thing to do, I think. Then, when you get started, how do you start? Well, you prioritize. Now, that's the hardest thing to do. Okay, you get your system, you get it all together, and now you got to prioritize. Now, let me suggest, because these are all, this is why this is all crammed together, because this is super, super duper important for you to do. You need to make your list of what you want to achieve, what you need to do. Now, if you're a stay-at-home mommy, mommy, mama, you probably still have things to categorize. You may still donate time at the food bank. You may still 
run another organization. You may still be the PTA. It's called something different these days. Um, you may have a home business. So prioritize the different things in your life that you need to devote time to today. Tomorrow it could be totally different. But each day prioritize what you need to devote time to during that day. Okay? Then categorize them. And here are the categories for each block of time that you need to devote some time to today. It will be A, which are the most important things that need to be done. It will be B, for things that still need attention today, but they're not the first things on the list. And then it will be C. And your C's are kind of things that, you know, it would be great if you can get to them, but if not, you can put them off. Okay? A's, B's, and C's. Now within your A's, it's like A1, and that's like as soon as I get in the office, in the kitchen, get up, as soon as the kids get off to school, I gotta do A1. A2 is I gotta get to that too, but it's not the first thing I touch. A3 is it's it's at the pretty much the top of the list because it's in the A group. So you get the opportunity to decide this has got to have my attention first, this has got to have my attention second, and then I gotta do that thirdly, okay? So you get control of your day. You get to decide what has to be done first, second, and third. So if you have three things that need your attention today, three, you gotta do stuff at the house, you gotta do stuff at the church, you gotta do stuff with um, the sorority you're involved with then mark off three different blocks of time. One gets an hour, one gets an hour and a half, and at home you need to spend two hours doing stuff with your family. And then you prioritize what has to be done within that in different ways. So you prioritize and then you block those off. You compartmentalize. After you prioritize, you compartmentalize. When you do that, it gives you a whole different scope of what's going on, okay? Now, I'm going to flip over here, and I'm going to show you this. This is why I use my Franklin Planner. Uh, it's written in pencil. I always write in pencil on that. I know you can't see it well. That's fine with me, because I have <laughs> some things on here that not everybody has to, has to see. I have people's names. I have things to do. So, I use this type. Now, in the Franklin Planner... It gives you a column for you do A's and B's and C's. And then you do check marks. Now, if I didn't get to some of these and I needed to do it tomorrow, I would put I would put an arrow. And that means it's going to go on tomorrow's sheet. And that's going to go on tomorrow's sheet. If I needed to send a text or I needed to leave a message, then instead of checking it off, I would put a circle in it. That means it's in progress. When it's in progress and completed, then it gets a check mark by it. And if this was something, let's pop over here because this is today. This was something that all the information for completing it was actually on yesterday's page. I don't want to rewrite all of it again. So I just go, I do a back arrow and then I do RE, refer to 12-1 because all the information for that is on yesterday. So that's a good way to shorthand what you have to do. Okay? And then over here is where I make my lines and then I do information up here and then this is for things I want to order today. And then I still have some other planners that I would like to see and work with and see how they work. So this says shop planners. So I just want to sit down and really look at some things. Okay. Now, well, we don't have much time left. Okay. Now, this is my Erin Condren. You can absolutely see there is no way that I can work from this like I work for my Franklin Covey. This is like my life right here. This, however, is a great bullet journal. So I can put highlight the 
broad aspect of things that need to be done in this one. And it's got pretty stickers and it looks nice and when I need a breath of fresh air, I go to this. Now I was like getting this started, so I don't have it filled in today. That's on my list of things to do. So um, I love this. In one of my videos, you're going to see why I went to a pretty planning system also. But I absolutely love this. But it's for a much different planning reason than my Franklin. Okay? And I'll show that at some point. So, whenever you prioritize, you saw how we did that. And that will just help you so much. You prioritize and then you categorize. I hope that made sense because that's like... Oh my goodness, that releases you like crazy. Give yourself some time in your planner. Everything does not have to be, every minute does not have to be used up completely. Um, good planning is going to release you. It's not going to tie you down and you're not going to just be tied to your schedule. It's actually going to get stuff out of your brain, like your brain's all clogged up with what has to be done, and you feel just, I don't know about you, but, but I just go crazy when it's all in my brain because there's so much stuff running around in there, I don't even know if there's any way I can do it. When I put it on paper, one thing is I find out I don't have to do it all today. Some of it I can totally release, some of it I can do this weekend, and some of it I can do tomorrow. And that is so helpful to be able to see that on paper. It, it will just make it all look and be easier. So, and if this, if this on the Franklin, if the way my schedule looked here only looks like a super busy, crazy person that has way too much to do, then remember, I'm looking at you. Because I would be willing to bet that's you also. We all have different things to do, but we're all super crazy busy in this world. So, that's us. You can make your day and life easier. Your planner can do that because it lets you look at things totally. There we are. We're out of time. <laughs> okay. And I don't know how to shut that off. So, and it worked out perfect.